Hello there, these are your PT3 notes on nonmetals on page 9 in your lab notebook. So right here you see a picture of the periodic table. So far we have talked about the characteristics of metals, which are everything in blue here to the left of the staircase. And today we are going to talk about characteristics of nonmetals, which is everything in green to the right of the staircase, and the metalloids, which are on the staircase. So first of all, what is a nonmetal? Um, some basic characteristics of nonmetals. First of all, they are the complete opposites of metals. So they are poor conductors. They are, um, if they're found in the solid state, which a lot of them are gases, but the ones that are our solids are dull and brittle. So dull being the opposite of shiny, um, and then brittle meaning that they break really easily. Because they are poor conductors, they are therefore good insulators. So you use a lot of these things like it would be the rubber coating on a electric wire. The inside would be a metal conductor and on the outside is an insulator. And as I mentioned before, nonmetals are the complete opposite of metals. Um, we do have some families of different types of nonmetals. So we're going to go with the columns or the groups, the family names. We're starting with a carbon family. The carbon family is in group 14 on the periodic table. They can gain or lose four electrons in chemical reactions. So um, when elements decide to join with other elements to make compounds, it all depends on the number of electrons that they have and um, to, make, to determine what kind of compounds they make. So that's why we mentioned that there. Um, there are some examples right here to the left. Carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, and lead are all in the carbon family. Um, some examples of where you would find some of these elements real quick. Tin would be like in a tin can, a soup can. Um, this is coal, which is the um, ordinary form of carbon, which you would find in the ground and just dig up. And also germanium is an example um, that's found in the carbon family. The nitrogen family is next. The nitrogen family is found in group 15. There are two nonmetals, which are nitrogen and phosphorus, found in this group. Um, nitrogen makes up most of our air. So showing down here, about 78% of our atmosphere that we breathe every day is made of nitrogen. Phosphorus can be found on the end of matches, um, the part you kind of swipe to make the fire. Antimony, this is bismuth, is another example. Um, also, they share three electrons in reactions. Um, a couple of uses for things like antimony. Antimony is found in batteries, paints, in flame-proofing things like ceramic tiles or pottery. Um, bismuth, a lot of times you see you combine it with other elements to make an alloy, and you find bismuth in things like fire extinguishers and fire detectors. The oxygen family is next. This is group 16 on the periodic table. They contain three nonmetals, which would be oxygen, sulfur, and selenium. Oxygen, we know, is in the air. We breathe it in every day. Um, sulfur, this is an example of sulfur right here. Um, sulfur is a really good example of a dull and brittle nonmetal. So it is not shiny, it is a yellow, it has a terrible smell, it smells like rotten eggs, um, but if you were to try to poke it or break it, it would break really easy, kind of like chalk, so it's very brittle. Um, selenium is found in shampoos like head and shoulders, and they share two electrons in reactions. The halogen family is group 17 right here. The word halogen, the stems in it, literally means salt forming. Halo means salt, and gen means to produce or to form. Um, these are the most reactive nonmetals. So they are always ready to join up with other elements and make compounds. They share one electron in chemical reactions. And here are the elements that are listed in the halogen family. Fluoride. Um, is in your toothpaste, that's fluorine. You can find iodine, this is an example of iodine. We use it um, if you're gonna have surgery or something like that in a hospital or in a doctor's office, they might swab iodine on you because it kills bacteria and prevents infection. Um, chlorine, we see just about every day. When chlorine with its one valence electron, no, 
with its seven valence electrons and sodium Na with its one um, valence electron combine, it makes salt, which is behind my head here and you can't see it, but salt is NaCl. So that is quite literally salt from the halogen family. Um, and then the picture of Sundrop here, we actually have bromine, Br number 35, is found in a lot of citrus sodas like Sundrop and Mountain Dew. Um, it helps keep the citrus flavoring from separating out, but that being said, it's also really bad for you and there's a lot of research showing that um, it can actually cause a lot of problems with your thyroid. <laughs> so be careful drinking all those sodas. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. So those are the most reactive nonmetals in the halogen family. Our next group is group 18. It's the one all the way on the end. These are the noble gases. That's their family name. Um, they do not like to react with other elements. They have eight valence electrons, which means eight electrons in their outermost energy shell. Um, and they are happy. Um, there's this thing called the rule of octet, which me, which says that um, if an element or a compound of elements um, has eight valence electrons in its outermost ring, then it is happy, it is stable, it's not trying to join up with any other elements. So the noble gases, I always refer to them as kind of the cat ladies with their eight little cats, and they are happy and content being alone. Um, examples of the noble gases are helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. We see these elements, neon, krypton, argon, in what we say, what we call neon signs, are um, those gas, they're all gases, and they glow very brightly in different colors depending on which element it is. Hydrogen is our little loner. We talk about him often. He does not belong to any families or groups. He's over all the way on the left um, of the periodic table because he has one proton in his nucleus. Um, it is the lightest element because an element gets its mass from how many protons and neutrons it has in its nucleus. And hydrogen has one proton and zero neutrons. And it is the most abundant element. We have water on this precious planet, H2O, where we find hydrogen. Um, but hydrogen is also found in the stars and all around us. So that's hydrogen, just the little loner, but very important. The metalloids are the next um, categorization. So metalloids are on the staircase. These are the guys right here that touch that staircase that we've been talking about in class. Um, the metalloids are elements that have some characteristics of both metals and non-metals. I always call them kind of in-betweeners. So the metals, besides hydrogen, are all to the left of the staircase. The non-metals are all to the right of the staircase. And then the metalloids are the guys that are actually on the staircase. They're kind of the dividing line and they have some things in common with metals and some things that are in common with non-metals. Um, the big thing to always remember Metalloids are semiconductors, all right? Semiconductors, which means they can conduct electricity under certain conditions, depending on which element it is and what the conditions are surrounding it. Um, a couple of places that we see some of these elements, um, arsenic, right here. Arsenic is a poison, <laughs> um, but it is also found in insecticides, which is why it's a poison, and in wood preservation. So if you buy like treated lumber, it might have arsenic in it. Um, silicon, SI, is a metalloid, and it is found in a lot of computer chips and technology type stuff because it is a semiconductor, conducts heat and electricity under certain conditions. Um, make sure that you recognize which elements are metalloids. Again, it's these ones that are highlighted here. It's boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, and polonium. All right, so go ahead real quick. That was the nonmetals and the metalloids. Um, go ahead and flip to page 12 in your notes. I'm going to go through this kind of quick, so feel free to pause the video to copy these things down. But this is a little chart on page 12 where it has some characteristics of the metals, nonmetals, transition metals, and then, of course, the metalloids. Um, but notice in your notes it also says in the heading the location on the periodic table and to include some examples. So if you're a person that's doing the right thing and you're actually listening to me right now, I'm gonna give you some extra answers that are not on the screen and you need to write those things down in this chart. All right, all right, here we go. 
So metals, in general, metals are shiny. These are all properties of metals or characteristics of metals. They are shiny. They are malleable, which means we can um, hammer them. They are ductile. We can stretch them into long, thin wires. They are good conductors of heat and electricity, and they react easily by losing electrons. Now, the location on the periodic table, include this in your chart if you're listening. Um, they are always found to the left of the staircase. Here are a few examples of metals. Sodium, which is Na. Calcium, which is Ca. Silver, Ag. And iron, Fe. There are many others, but those are just a few examples to jot down in your notes. The nonmetals in general, their properties are that they are poor conductors, which by default makes them good insulators, the opposites of metals. They react with other elements. Um, most of the nonmetals are in gas form, but the ones that are solid are dull and brittle, just like I mentioned sulfur a few minutes ago. The transition metals are a special section of the metals. They are found to the left of the um, staircase. They have some special properties, though. These are specifically in groups 3 through 12, are called the transition metals, the middle of the periodic table. Um, in general, they are hard, they're shiny, they are good conductors, they are less reactive than other metals, they have a low specific heat compared to water, and they have a high melting point, which is good because they're used in like pots and pans, and you don't want your pots and pans to melt on the stove. Um, so again, remember to include the location on the periodic table. These are found in groups 3 through 12. And some examples of transition metals would be iron, Fe. Now listen, I told you to list iron as a metal up above because it is a metal, but it's also classified as a transition metal because it falls in that section of the periodic table in groups 3 through 12. Gold, which is Au, is also a transition metal. Tungsten, which is W, and chromium, which is Cr. So all of those are transition metals. And lastly, the metalloids. Metalloids are solids at room temperature. They are brittle in general, so they break real easily. They are hard, they're somewhat reactive, and um, they are semiconductors. So they vary depending on the circumstances of whether they will conduct electricity or not. Again, the metals are located on the staircase, so that's their location, touching the staircase. And some examples are B for boron, silicon, which is SI, antimony is SB, arsenic, AS, polonium, PO, tellurium, TE. Those are examples of your metalloids. Make sure you've jotted all these answers down. Um, go ahead and pause if you're not done jotting this down because I know it's a lot to write. Alrighty, thanks guys.